My con artist boyfriend gets another woman pregnant and makes another man think he's the father. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. Well, I was had. I've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok. This is a trailer trash roller coaster. All aboard. I thought I was in a slightly tumultuous but overall fun relationship for a year. I had gotten out of a 12-year relationship when I met Jerk. He was so charming and handsome, I thought I'd won the lottery. He was super pushy about saying I love you first and defining our relationship. He introduced me to his family. His niece started calling me auntie. He tells me about his three children and their mothers, and lies about how the mother of his oldest hates him, and is keeping him away from the kid. But then things started to get weird. His ex started calling all the time, multiple times a day. They had children together, but the grandmother had custody. The lie I was told to make it seem normal was that both of them had jobs where they needed to travel a lot, so they signed legal guardianship over to the grandma to make schooling and emergency issues easier. Then she moved down to the city we were living in for work training. Then she was moving down permanently without the kids. When I asked why the kids weren't coming, the lie I was told was they needed to stay in the same school. Um, they're six and four, I'd say. Staying with parents is more important at that age than their peer group. It was weird. But I'm the cool girlfriend, and it wasn't my place to tell them where their daughter should live. His work was in the cannabis industry, kind of. He worked with the ex-brother-in-law going to legal states, buying pounds at a time and trafficking it via USPS. So when he tells me he's going to Oregon, I think nothing of it. After a week in Oregon, a lot of stories aren't adding up. Like his phone is always dead, even though he carries a power bank with him. Then one of his friends starts posting cuddled up selfies with him. I quickly put two and two together and dump him for cheating on me with this chick in Oregon. After I dumped him, I made a messy Facebook post on his wall, which the mother of his oldest child sees, and she contacts me and lays out the truth. He never contacts his oldest daughter, even though he has her cell phone number. No one's keeping him from her. He owes 20k in back child support for her, as he had never once made a payment and he moves around a lot and works under the table, so the mother was never able to collect garnishments or anything like that. He is a huge criminal record, starting with the R word which he committed at age 15, and then a lifetime of fraud, larceny, and substance charges I knew nothing about. His ex, who moved to our city, was his girlfriend of 9 years, who was very much still in a relationship with him. They willingly gave up the two children because they preferred to use. Apparently, there was a fourth child. He and the mother conspired to pin the paternity on another poor sap, and it's been 17 years now that this other man has been paying for a kid that's not his. Apparently, I was his side chick. His family knew and played along in the lie, and included their 10 and 16 year old children as well. His chick in Oregon is actually his star crossed lover from childhood, and every time they would try to be together, one or the other would end up in jail. The Oregon chick also has has a criminal record. Highlights include criminally negligent homicide from a DUI where she killed her passenger, fraud, larceny, and substance charges. This shocked me, so I paid for a criminal background check, which is how I learned of their records. I profusely thanked the ex for telling me the truth about the situation. I mulled on it for a bit, trying to convince myself to simply consider myself lucky and just walk away with my dignity intact. But then he'd be winning, and I knew I had everything in my power to come down on him like Thor's hammer. I gave the ex all of his info, social security number, state ID numbers, current and past known addresses. With this, she contacted her state's child support services. He'll now have his driver's license revoked and can't get one no matter the state he moves to until he's current with his past payments. If he ever gets a real job, 25% of his wages will be garnished. He now has 
a warrant out for his arrest in the state his oldest kid lives in. He's trying to play house with his new girlfriend, and contacted the mother of his oldest to arrange a meeting with his kid and his girlfriend's child. The mother is playing nice and pretending it's a go, and he's planning a trip to visit the daughter. He will not see her. At the meeting, he'll be seeing the police, and they'll arrest him for failure to pay. He won't get out of jail until he pays a sizable chunk of the $20,000 past due, plus bail. I gave his ex the info the day before his federal tax refund was set to go out. She was fast enough at getting his info to CSS that they intercepted his full tax refund, and now he is for the first time paid for something for his child. His past due child support is also going on his credit report. I know the name of the business his ex-brother-in-law owns and uses to launder his money. I dropped a dime to the IRS, so he's losing his only steady income soon and can't get a job at a Walmart due to his criminal record. And if he does manage to find someone who hires without criminal background checks, he'll lose one quarter of his paycheck. I told this story to two of my hacker friends and they got in contact with hackers more talented than themselves and are now going to take care of a few more things for me, like finding the guy who was conned into paying for a kid that's not his. Wow, this guy sounds like the definition of a jerk. He just bounces around from state to state doing whatever he wants with women and leaving them with kids and not paying for it. Eventually, that's all going to catch up with you. You can't just pull the wool over everyone's eyes forever. You tick off enough people, they're all going to get together and bring you down. In this case, his exes have pulled this off very well. Being able to shut down his current business is probably what's going to hurt him the most. None of this this would have really had an impact if he still had that to fall back on. But once our original poster ripped that out from underneath him, he's gonna be having a hard time for a while. With all the things he's done in the past, who knows what he's gonna turn to now. Probably just find some new sugar mama he can con until she figures stuff out and he has to move on to the next one. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below, and if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below. And don't forget to subscribe. I told my dad that just because my mom died doesn't mean that I'm going to take her place. I'm a 16-year-old female, and my mom passed away recently. My 14-year-old brother and dad are so devastated by this tragic loss, and we're all struggling. I've basically found myself handling all the chores and work around the house. My brother's too traumatized. He hasn't been talking since the funeral, and my dad hasn't been lifting a finger to do a single thing. He started making requests from cleaning the messy living room, he sleeps on the couch, to picking up dirty laundry, to doing dishes, cooking or ordering food, walking the dogs, vacuuming, doing repairs, mowing the lawn, washing the car since my brother stopped doing it. Oftentimes, I'm too exhausted. Mom used to do the chores and I used to help. But I have school and after school commitments and my dad keeps negatively commenting on how I get things done and comparing me to mom, like how much time I take to make breakfast and things like that. Yesterday, he woke me up at 6 a.m. even though he told me to skip school and wanted me to make breakfast. I scrambled eggs and prepared other dishes, then went to wake up my brother. I set the table and once dad sat down, he looks at the scrambled eggs and goes, what is this? This is not the right way to make scrambled eggs. Your mother used to make perfect scrambled eggs. Did you not learn anything from her at all? How are we supposed to survive if you can't even properly make scrambled eggs. He looks at my brother and says, We're doomed. I snap and loudly tell him I'm not his replacement wife. And who is he to expect me to do this and that for him? He looks at me stunned and my brother rushes out immediately. Dad starts telling me how cruel and insensitive what I just said was and how out of line I was. I reply that I was too tired to make the perfect scrambled eggs my mom used to make and that maybe if he as a parent had tried to learn, we wouldn't be suffering right now. He gets up, throws the towel, and walks out. My aunt came to visit, and when I told her, she went off, saying I never should have said that to my grieving dad, and that I should be ashamed of myself for talking to him like that. Am I the jerk?
I mean, what, you're not allowed to have time to grieve as well? Why do they get to sit back and relax and you have to take up all the work around the house? As an adult, he should be able to at least cook scrambled eggs for himself and not have to wake you up at 6am to do so. As far as I'm concerned, your dad is way out of line putting all of this on you. It should be him taking up all these tasks. If he wants a maid, then he can go hire one. Or if he wants someone to replace his wife so fast, then go out there and get him. See what everyone thinks of that. But no, you see your daughter as an easy person to dump all of this onto and expect her to just do everything for you. I assume because she's female. No, I'm sorry, dad needed a wake up call here and I don't blame our original poster one bit. Jerk supervisor gets mad that coworker and I used our paid break to eat food. This happened just now. It might not be as exciting as some of the other stories that go around, but here we go. I work in a lab that employs a lot of people nationwide. Kind of irrelevant, but whatever. We get a lot of cases from doctors and hospitals all across the country every day to run the tests they order. Because of the sheer amount of cases we get daily, we have a lot of quality control that needs to be done by the end of the week, and if it doesn't get done by Saturday night, we have to do a rotation every week to finish it. My actual supervisor said we have to stay around 4-6 to six hours, or until everything's done. There's this cynical old woman who works in my department. She's a massive pain in the butt, and sends endless amounts of emails a day, about fixing things that aren't broken, or doing something wrong even though we followed her directions, all while she's doing none of her own work. She also happens to be the lead of our department, even though she never sees any of us because she's in the back office, not in the actual lab. Today is my rotation. It just so happens to be my birthday weekend. My birthday was Friday, and the co-worker who I'm doing the rotation with brought breakfast burritos for the two of us. Thankfully, there wasn't a lot of work last week, and there was minimal quality control to do. After we stayed for an hour and were 80% done with our work, we took a paid 15-minute break. Break. 16 minutes later, we come back into the lab, and she starts yelling at us because we went over our time, and she leaves the lab and calls our manager, who basically said it doesn't matter since we're still getting the work done. Old woman comes back and says we can't leave until the work is done, even though she'll be leaving in about an hour. Okay then, we finish all of our work in 10 minutes after we came back from break, but since we're still on the clock, we're deciding to stay for the entire 6 hours doing my mindless work. Cleaning already sanitized stations, deleting emails, dusting keyboards, changing pens, things like that, which will cost the company about $300 more because of overtime pay on our paychecks. All because we were one minute over on our break. Like I said, it might not be as exciting as some of the other posts on here, but this is the first time this overworked and underpaid oncology lab worker is doing something like this. I mean, your break is your break. You're coming back one minute late. If we're really going to start analyzing things like that, it's not going to go well for the manager. We all know the employees give more than they get. When you start counting minutes like that, all you're doing is leaving a bad taste in their mouth and wanting them to rebel and do something like this. The argument for that one minute is that it's company time and you're wasting the company's money. But now, by needlessly ticking off your hardworking employees, they're going to make you pay for a whole bunch of extra hours of overtime just because they can. Was it really worth it? Happy employees is always the best thing for a company. Don't screw with that. My boss insisted I attend his mandatory go-kart racing sessions. Too bad he didn't know I used to do this competitively. A few years back, I started my first job as a mechanic and was informed of the mandatory monthly kart race at the local track, which was promoted by my boss and owner of the company. He didn't care if you enjoyed it or not. He booked the time slot and we all had to show up. After working hours and paying our own ticket to drive, it was supposed to be a team-building exercise 
supplies, and I could see the boss really liked race cars through the various pictures and trophies in his office. During the week, in anticipation of the event, boss would motivate and participate in setting the mood for the upcoming race. It was the only topic that week, and I was told by colleagues that this was really important. I knew that on the evening of the race, I had to pick up my girlfriend, and that would clash with the race. So a couple of days before, I told my supervisor that I would not be attending the race. It was after hours and on my dime anyway, so I didn't think it would be a problem. Some 20 minutes later, I'm summoned to the boss's office, and he's not looking happy. He tells me that building the team's spirit is one of his priorities, and that I'm new there so I was to give a lot of focus to this monthly event if I was to keep working there, because it was part of the core culture of the company. I really needed the job, so I just said, sure thing boss. On the evening of the event, I drive to the cart track, and upon arrival, I see my colleagues all in jeans and t-shirts, and my boss is in full ballerina attire. He had racing overalls, racing boots, gloves, and even a custom helmet. It dawned on me the reason for the event and why so much attention was given to it. Cart racing was his thing. With about 15 racers, I asked to start dead last. Boss man listens to me talking and intervenes in front of everyone that we were there to race, and not just to drive around slowly. Up until that point, I wasn't really paying much attention, but I decided to comply and show how much the core corporate culture was important to me. Starting from last, I proceeded to overtake all other carts, including boss man on the outside of a fast corner. Overtaking on the outside is often seen as a bold, arrogant move. After just a few more laps, I reached him again, and as I was about to lap him, he went into the pits and stepped out. I duly won the race, and as I left the track into the bar, the real team building event, someone tells me that the boss had left. At the bar that evening, the topic of conversation was how I outraced everyone, and how the boss who had won all races since ever was livid with my performance. Too bad for him. I guess I forgot to add to my resume that I had raced carts competitively as a kid, so I knew what I was doing and shattered his Ricky Bobby dreams. After that, I was always courteously invited but never again required to show up to his events. I went a few times but arrived late on purpose so I would just take part in the bar thing and not the race. That's kind of a jerk move. To force all of your employees to come out to mandatory go-kart day just so you can whoop their butts and feel good about it? It's really kind of childish. I mean, by all means, if you want to have this team building exercise and have fun with people at work, go for it. But you can't make it mandatory. Threatening people's jobs for not coming to go-kart day is kind of the definition of a jerk move. Especially when you're not paying for anything. It'd be one thing if you did it a couple times a year on the company's dime, but you expect them to come out every time and pay for themselves. That's great that it's your idea of a good time, but maybe not everybody wants to be there. And you just need to be an adult and accept that. Karen refuses to sit behind the yellow line and quickly learns why it's a suggestion. So this happened when I was younger, but I remember it well, as does my entire family who saw it. We went to a zoo, probably a Six Flags zoo, maybe the San Diego, but that doesn't matter. There was a lion show and my family went. There was a big, bold yellow line, and it said, do not sit past the yellow line on a sign before you enter the area. So my family family follows the rules, and there's this woman that today we would call a Karen. She's the only one to sit in front of the yellow line. A zookeeper comes by and says, Ma'am, would you like to move behind the yellow line? And Karen goes, No, I found my spot. This is my spot. The zookeeper goes, Okay, and leaves her there. So the show opens, the lion keepers and tamers come out and see Karen in front. The showrunner tells the tiger a phrase, points at the lady, and the lion shoots a stream at the lady, and she runs out of the show coated in urine. The entire crowd laughs, and the show goes on without issue. It's a story that my family still talks about once in a while. 
I mean, she brought this on herself. Everyone else is able to follow the rules that are very clearly set out, and the employee even address you directly. You chose to stay there despite all the warnings. You've got no one else to blame. The suggestion wouldn't be there without a good reason. Next time, just take the advice you're being given and sit a little further back. Better safe than sorry. My daughter ruined her stepsister's $3,000 dress. Now, I'm going to make her work to pay for it. My oldest, Bethany, has a step-sibling, Maria, who's almost 15. Bethany and I are white, while my husband and Maria are Mexican descent. They've been in each other's lives since they were 6 and 7, and overall, the relationship is good, until recently. Maria's quinceanera is coming up, and my husband and his ex-wife took her to get her a dress. The dress and alteration came to around $3,000. My daughter's been very jealous of the whole party. I've informed her it's part of the culture, just like when she had a huge sweet 16 party with her friends. I spent more time with her to try and make her feel better about it and got her her own much cheaper dress for the party. The party is supposed to be in two weeks, but my daughter had an argument with Maria about the TV. She scribbled Sharpie all over the expensive dress and ripped the back. The short story, everyone was ticked. I gave money to my husband and his ex to try to get a new dress ASAP. I informed my daughter she'll need to get a job and pay back the full price of the dress as punishment. We got into a huge argument over it, with her saying the whole situation isn't fair and that I'm choosing Maria and being a huge jerk. Is that true? I have absolutely no arguments with our original poster's decision here. She needs to be held accountable for her actions and learn exactly how much a $3,000 dress is. What she did was incredibly selfish and bratty and childish. And if she's going to insist on acting like a child, you're going to have to make her grow up real quick. And this is just one way to do it. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.